Hello, this is UATV. My name is Tom Bell. Now, Europe and especially Ukraine have been rattled by Donald Trump and his apparent willingness to restore relations with Kremlin leader Vladimir Putin. Just days ago, we saw Russian-led attacks on Avdivka, a city located just north of Donetsk. And uh, many analysts believed this was a test for Washington towards their resolve for Russia and Ukraine. Now, I'm pleased to say, joining us via Skype is Bogdan Yaromenko. He is the chairman of the board at the Kiev-based NGO Maidan of Foreign Affairs. Bogdan, uh, nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Well, I've, firstly, I wanted to ask you about uh, the recent developments in U.S. foreign policy towards Ukraine. Uh, what's your opinion? What, what do you predict is going to happen? Well, so far, there are not really too much happening. So after the intervention, we heard a couple of statements of uh, advisors to Mr. Trump that there are some consultations between the United States and Russia is, uh, taken, are taking place. Also, we heard the statement of President Trump himself that, uh, I mean, during the press conference with the British Prime Minister, that it's too early probably to speak about the cancellation of the sanctions against the Russian Federation. And most recently, we heard the telephone conversation between leaders of Ukraine and the United States discussing the general uh, framework of solution for Ukraine and things of this kind. So... Um, I, I believe at this point uh, all negotiations and contacts uh, which are aimed on finding some solutions are just at the very uh, initial stage. Mm. Uh, President Trump is trying to set up his policies towards Ukraine. Uh, it's difficult for him because uh, his uh, statements and messages during the presidential campaign were highly controversial. Uh, nevertheless, so far, we're receiving more clear signals. And if uh, really President Trump is trying to learn more about the issue prior of any uh, definitive uh, decisions. Mm -hmm. that's, that's good. It's something that we, we need to welcome and to yeah. follow. So you think it's a sort of distraction? Because um, I don't know if you read the Trump statement on Ukraine recently. He was talking about attacks on the border, uh, but it's not a border. The, the, the border's uh, several hundred kilometres away. So uh, what do you think this says about foreign policy? Well, again, Mr. Trump needs uh, some time to to learn more about Ukraine, about uh, the status of uh, war between Ukraine and Russia, the reasons, the history, uh, so on. And uh, we see that he's just trying to set up the, 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 the proper, uh, let's say, scheme of the administration. So uh, the Secretary of State was just recently appointed about two days ago. So, so all other uh, dignitaries are to be appointed. So it, it will take time for them. But... Um, again, um, in opposite to what we have heard during the presidential campaign, uh, all kind of statements that uh, Crimea should belong to, to Russia, that there are no real Russian intrusion into Ukraine. Right now, the messages are uh, much more related to the realities of, on the ground that they used to be. So we see some positive dynamics, and we understand that Mr. Trump needs more people, more advisors, and more time. Uh, to set up a proper policy and approach to Ukrainian issue. And I hope that Ukrainian diplomacy is also working hard to assist um, new American administration to understand the situation better. Yeah, and that's true, actually, because in the United States, um, there is a big uh, Ukrainian effort to um, influence, to, to lobby the American Congress, to uh, lobby the American presidential administration um, for uh, issues um, about Ukraine. Um, you're a former diplomat. You have um, years of experience. So um, what would you advise? Like, how do you think Ukraine should like, step forward and, and uh, promote its image in America? It's a highly complicated issue for Ukraine in general, because on one side, Ukraine needs uh, quite straightforward support to overcome uh, the difficulties linked to Russian aggression against our country. So we, we are at war, and without uh, allies and without proper assistance from abroad, it will take us decades to uh, find some solutions on our own against Russia. So on other, on other side, we need uh, the proper support, the huge, the massive support um, on trying to deal with our internal problems, like mm. corruption, like ineffectiveness of the government. We need investments to develop our economy. And uh, quite often those messages that Ukrainian diplomacy and public diplomacy and Ukrainians are delivering to outer world, they're quite contradictory. And it's 
quite natural. On, white, on one side, we're talking about the war and the country at war. On the other side, we are uh, asking our colleagues, friends, uh, and partners to pay more attention to Ukrainian economy, to invest, uh, to come here, to visit, to see what's happening. So uh, it's highly difficult for Ukraine right now to find the balance between those two messages, the, the country which needs assistance to stop the war, and the economy, the country which has needed more attention in terms of investments, in terms of economic assistance, in terms of fight against corruption, so on, so on, so on. Um, but again, uh, it looks like that uh, we as a nation, we have no other choice but to continue with both two messages in Washington and uh, all over the United States. And my suggestion for Ukrainian diplomacy in, in the United States would be uh, not to limit uh, their activities just um, with the Capitol Hill or mm -hmm. with the Congress, with the White House. We need to go broader to uh, try to appeal to American society, to uh, some American values, which are basically shared by Ukrainians. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we need to go broader to, to, to different states, to different um, groups of, popul of United, mm -hmm. uh, American population. Of course, uh, we are um, already assisted, but we need to continue to work with the Ukrainian diaspora, Ukrainian society in the United States, uh, mobilizing their support and their activities. So there are uh, probably a lot of job to be done by Ukraine, to yeah. uh, not just to assure the proper understanding of the situation by Mr. Trump, but to secure their um, uh, strategic approach of American uh, society, American government to the issues related to yeah. Ukraine. Well, this is very relevant, though, because I don't think many Americans really know what is happening in Ukraine. They can only believe what they see on the television or what they perhaps read uh, from the presidential press releases as well. Um, I wanted to uh, move on and ask you about the recent statement in the UN by the US ambassador who said that sanctions won't be lifted um, on Russia until they return uh, Crimea to Ukraine. Um, what sort of um, what sort of message did that give Ukraine? Was that a positive message? Well, of course. Well, we, we just we can't do nothing but welcome those kind of statements. The other side of the picture is that uh, we're still not sure how the system works within the White House. Who are who is in charge? Uh, is it uh, the policy? which has been uh, subordinated uh, to the President Trump himself, or just the personal opinion of uh, another United States dignitary, the uh, permanent representative to the UN. Uh, again, uh, we are welcoming, and of course we share 100% those statements, but we would like to be assured that this is the official United States policy, which would be uh, in a very well-organized manner, uh, implemented by the whole United States government, but not just by a couple of officials in the different uh, secretary in the different uh, ministries. Mm. And do you find it concerning, for example, that in these statements that are being released uh, from Washington, uh, that they use um, specific terminology? We don't often see the word like Russian invasion. Instead, it's a conflict between uh, Russia and Ukraine. Um, is that significant? That's important, because those details are providing much more clear understanding of what's happening. But, uh, well, before blaming anyone uh, in the United States, we need to confess that uh, a lot of confusion has been created by Ukrainian authorities. Uh, instead of calling this war, instead of uh, taking the proper legal decisions uh, how to deal with the situation as with the external aggression and war, we're still using a lot of confusing language, legal language here in this country, uh, like anti-terrorist campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we see some ministers here in this country trying to make the statements that, so let's say, Donbass is not temporarily occupied territory by Russia, but something else. So um, I can understand why some Americans do not understand clear the, 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 the situation. Um, we have a lot of job to be done even here in Ukraine, inside this country. I see. And uh, one final question. I wanted to ask you about NATO's work in Ukraine. How important is this? Because um, recently it was announced that uh, Trump and NATO um, Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg are, are soon to meet. Um, so is that significant? Do you think NATO will continue its support in the way it is for Ukraine? Or do you see a, a change coming up in the, in the nearest months? Well, I would suggest two ways of explaining the role of NATO. Well, the, the first thing that Ukrainians would like to have NATO as an ally structure, which is helping us to defend our country, which is not, unfortunately, the case uh, in our situation. So NATO is assisting uh, to improve Ukrainian military. Spain 
uh, a lot of attention on improving the democratic situation in Ukraine, the fight against corruption, legal reform, so on, so on, so on. But uh, NATO soldiers and the uh, military uh, men from NATO countries are not assisting us on the front line. We've not been provided with the military equipment, especially with the lethal weapons uh, from the NATO countries. So in terms of the defense and dealing with the most crucial issues on the front line in the eastern Ukraine, NATO, I'm sorry to say, a little bit worthless uh, for Ukraine. But in terms of the general approach to update our military structures to reform Ukraine's uh, not just military, but also the civil society, the public sector, NATO is highly instrumental. And of course, the political support of the NATO countries that are implementing uh, the sanctions against Russian Federation, they are also very important. So it's, as always, it's a mixed picture. So on, on one side, uh, probably the expectations of Ukrainians are quite high mm -hmm. uh, of NATO, at the same, but at the same time, we need to be reasonable. NATO is doing a lot to help us in a different ways. Well, that's very interesting, Mr. Yaromenko. Thank you very much for your time, and we'll, we'll see what happens with the uh, U.S. foreign policy in the coming months. Yes, we'll see what's happened next. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was Bogdan Yaromenko. He is the chairman of the board at the Kiev-based NGO Maidan Foreign Affairs. You're watching UATV.